Ari, you and I have spent time in front of a turning center. We've spent time in front of a milling machine. And we talked a little bit, just kind of getting the audience excited about customizing something in their shop. So we decided to go out here where there are custom solutions all around us, standing in front of one right here with some very cool parts. So you know what else is kind of fun? Do not enter. We busted those rules. Well, we wouldn't do that, of course, if it was running. So please don't call OSHA. It's not running right now. Yep. But Ari and I snuck behind the yellow ribbon so that we could get a closer look at this custom set machine to describe it to you because we know the importance of the job shops with high mix, low volume, needing the ability to automate so that we can compete on a global scale, to have things running through the nights and weekends, and to have all of our operators get more creative, do the things that they love. It's dull, dirty, dangerous. We've heard mm -hmm. the three Ds all the time. Ari, we're here now. We're talking customization. We know it's U.S. made. We know the importance of the job shops. What pieces of this conversation would you like to amplify first? Yeah, really, you know, what we've looked at thus far today, you know, is, is really our standard solutions that are, uh, you know, low volume, high mix, you know, simple geometry type parts. This one's a little bit outside that box, right? We call this a modified load and go. You know, this customer has unique geometry parts. These are castings. We do a lot of these castings, forgings, die cast type parts with these modified load and goes. So we have, we take a part that otherwise wouldn't be able to be run in a, uh, in a normal standard type load and go, right? But we modify this unit in terms of, we modify the drawer inserts so there's uh, part specific nesting for these parts. We modify the part contact tooling to handle these parts in the process. This is going into a, a you know, Kuma LU3000 with a two jaw chuck and a tail stock, right? Um, so we have some different part contact tooling here, a wide range of parts. Parts are small, some of the parts are larger. We have all of that kitted together right here in, in this uh, solution. Customers don't have to worry about staging parts, losing parts. Um, you know, our, our engineering team have done a great job of taking a wide variety of parts, but making the drawer inserts to where they don't change them over. You know, there's a series of V-block notches to where these parts just sit based on the, the different lengths, they sit in a different notch. Um, so then we also have our uh, dot peen style part marker behind us. We have a lot of customers, right, that need to load, unload the machine, you know, so we're gonna put a robot there to unload, load the machine, take that off. What else do you need to do to your part? Well, I need to mark my part. Almost every part that we, we handle these days is getting marked. Well, some people don't want to, you know, utilize spindle time to engrave that part. So somebody's going to have to mark that part if the robot doesn't do it. Well, after we unload, load the machine, let's just blow the part off in an ambient air blow off station, dot peen part, mark the part, and then put it in back into the nest or into an outbound chute. So the part's done, right? So that's why we're really focused on uh, serious solutions, really working on understanding the, the tasks or the challenges you face at hand, right? So we solve all of those problems. We don't just automate a machine. All right, have you guys thought of everything? And if you've not already thought of it, you're thinking of it and it will adapt as it comes? We, uh, we've been around for 101 years, so we're very well at adapting. You look good for 101, Ari, I'll tell you that right now. So in summary, because we have been on a turning center, because we have been on a milling center, and the conversations we had there with that Lazy Susan style, mm -hmm. three centered uh, automation cell, and the ability to take jaws and move them in and out, we were focused there on the flexibility, right? Yes. But we didn't want to stop there. So we moved into this, this custom area and you've described a really, really cool setup. But for summary, for anyone out there who, who's watching, you have, and don't let me say this incorrectly, quote unquote, off the shelf systems. Absolutely. But you can also, based on this area we're in right now, a customer could call you, a potential future customer could call you, and something like this, but something completely different, could be put together based on their desires. Absolutely, yeah, so that's a great way. You know, the standard units are in stock, you know, ready to ship, worst case scenario, if we need to build a unit, you know, we're about four weeks, because we build everything here in Dayton, Ohio. Um, you know, on a modified unit, you're, you're looking at a, you know, really more of a 12 to 15 week lead time, typically. Uh, depending on the modifications, uh, but it's still a very cost-effective platform. It's very simplistic and intuitive. Our team does a phenomenal job of taking even a, even a you know multi-million-dollar multi-robot cell right with short tack times, gauging, inspection, the whole nine yards, but making it very simple and intuitive with the uh, HMIs. You know, our controls team does a phenomenal job of of utilizing making a, a complex cell digital and simplistic through our uh, HMI user interface. And the last thing that I think is important, we've put our stamp on it in the other two videos. We're going to put the MTD CNC stamp on it as well. American made. 
American Let's made. talk about the importance. For me, I have so, I'm an advocate, right? I, I know the importance, especially over the last few years when we saw the lead times and the mistakes and, and all of these issues that happen from the big ponds that are on either side of us. Being American made is multifaceted in its importance. It could be just what I described, or it could be the fact that we're supporting the country that we currently live in. What's the importance of being American made to you, Ari? You know, it's, we have a lot of pride in reshoring the main American manufacturing, you know, and there's there's just not enough people out there to really employ, you know, for the jobs. These We hear all the time that our robots are going to take the jobs. The robots aren't going to take the jobs. The robots are going to do the jobs that people don't want to do. We're going to utilize people for better jobs, right, that aren't dirty, dull, and dangerous. Um, some more intelligent jobs, things that the robot can't do. Um, but we're reshoring American manufacturing. We're building these things here in the United States in Dayton, Ohio, uh, with our design team, you know, our ex execution team, um, you know, so we're really helping uh, the United States, the way I see it, the United States and our, our local manufacturers through, across the country be more globally competitive uh, through automation um, so that we can reshore more of that manufacturing and keep it here in the United States. I love it. Very well said. I've said this before. I'll say it again. Ari doesn't even need me on camera. You always convey powerful messages. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and leave because Ari doesn't need me anymore. <laughs>